Why bodybuilders waste away. This is going to be an important video for the natty guys and for guys that are just kind of starting off and taking steroids to understand what could happen. I'm going to use some examples in the world. So guys have asked me for years as a physician, Doc, what's going on with these pro bodybuilders when they retire? They just don't go back to even like a normal or just kind of a jacked up guy, like a normal muscular guy. They seem to get accelerated with atrophy and disease. They just look horrible. And I know what's going on with that, guys, but I really haven't really put my mind to it to research it until now. So that's what this video is about. I want to use three examples, and I'm not doing this to upset anyone or for political correctness. I want to do this because this is my channel to show men that are using steroids of what the consequences may be. So the first example is Dave Palumbo. Dave Palumbo was called the mass monster. He was called the anabolic freak, and now look at him. I'm happy he's alive, but he's significantly smaller. And so many men have asked, even across the internet, why is Dave Palumbo so wasted? You know, why has he lost so much muscle? The arms are so small, neck is so small. I don't know, guys. So, but let me hypothesize why in general it could happen, just generally. So he's number one. Number two would be someone like Flex Wheeler, who obviously has significant unfortunate disease, and he's talked about himself. Flex is in a tough place. And you know, these guys are actually younger than me, a couple years younger than me. Dave's significantly younger than me. And we all know that they were professional bodybuilders and they took these risks. And now this is what we have from the health perspective. But they're also very small, right? So they, they're all presumably on TRT doses, but they don't have arms. They're not really muscular anymore. They look really, wow, so cachectic. That's the word, cachectic, where the muscles are wasted, you know? And number three is Dorian Yates, you know, and I'm not, again, guys, I'm not here to hate. Dorian Yates obviously was a mass monster, the mass monster in the 90s, north of 300 pounds. He's talked about the different regimens, I guess, he's, what he's come out with. I don't know if he's really told the things, you know, that he's really used and who cares. But we know that tons of drugs, tons of insulin back then and growth and all that and tons of calories. So... And now he's, he's, he's really kind of more like living like this, like I do in Vermont, you know, kind of meditative and trying to keep his health really, really tight because he's, I think, a year older than me, right? So he's humble for where he is, I assume, but significantly changed from the mass monster to where he is today. So, and he, here's the three hypothesized mechanisms of action. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you're concerned for your testosterone levels. In addition to testosterone, you want to check sexual wing binding globulin, estradiol, free androgen index, and potentially cortisol. That's where I want to talk about today's sponsor. Let's get checked. They're a worldwide leader in at-home test kits, so you can get a comprehensive look at your testosterone levels and other labs without even leaving your home. You can order a test kit that will be delivered to you in discrete packaging. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five business days. These results are reviewed by a clinician and a member of the Let's Get Checked nursing team may call you to review your results. Let's Get Checked Laboratories are CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation for labs. So if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com. Here's the three hypothesized mechanisms of action. Number one, they've done tons of anabolic steroids that have been super physiologic, sundry, sundry, sundry polypharmacy with multiple stacks of steroids for years, blasting, cruising on and off. We all know it's true to different degrees. Forgot PCT, it's not in the, in the mix here. And also insulin 
and different growth factors in IGF and, and growth hormone itself. So when you come down off all that, what happens to that skeletal muscle nucleus? What happens to, the, to the, all the years of downregulation from getting just stimulated? We have data for that. We have some really interesting data from muscle physiology doctors. This is really more in the world of pathologic neurology, so myopathy of the muscles. When you stimulate that muscle so much with androgens, it can actually get diseased. It, it, it grows in the beginning, musculoskeletal hypertrophy, and then you get things like necrotizing myopathy. And you can look at this, it's very rare guys, and it's just really not well understood. So that's number one, coming off the steroids, going down to TRT or coming off completely, and not having that stimulation on the muscle, you're gonna to lose tons of muscle. Next, number two, caloric deficit. So these guys know when they're bodybuilding and they're north of 275, 300, whatever, which we have now, this big Rammy guy, he's showing off pictures himself. He's over 320 something pounds. Oh man, just imagine just the metabolic demand and the metabolic stress that it's doing to his body. But it is what it is, guys. And this is a pro. These guys, they know what they're doing. So when you live that way to maintain that mass with the drugs, and then you pull down the drugs, you pull down the calories, you're gonna see a correction, and you're gonna see an overcorrection. So that's, that's the physiology or the pathophysiology, it's overcorrection, and that leads me into the third hypothesis, is that on top of the years of drug stimulation, you're gonna have different degrees of disease of the cardiac system and the nephrologic, the, the kidney system. So the heart system is going to be diseased. And when you look at cardia, cardiovascular cachexia, you can Google that. You can fact check that. For someone who's older and has heart failure, they're wasted or they have COPD. They're wasted. It's a special type of cachexia. And that's what I put together in addition to reducing the steroids, reducing the calories, they have developed significant degrees of heart and kidney disease. And that's why when they go back to just TRT and they're even in their 40s or 50s where you can be jacked. I mean, come on guys. I think you could be jacked. And I feel like I'm small, but you can, I've seen guys in their 50s that are natty and then they've gotten on little TRT, unbelievable effect. Much different than these guys. So that's because these guys at this point, the pros, have had significant degrees of cardiac disease, but they're still alive. Some of them obviously have bypasses and stents. Some are walking around a lot with chronic kidney disease. It's focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. That's what Flex has said he has, and he's on a couple of transplants. So you're not gonna be able to hold muscle because of this. So that's really what it is, guys. It's it's. Something that I want, the young guys that are natty, I know we've looked at the channel and about 25% of you guys are natty and you're doing your research and you're using my channel to make your decisions and I'm so happy for that. So think about this guys, you know, you can get away with stuff when you're young, you definitely can, but there's a price to pay for everything. You know, as I say, there's no free lunch. So let's get some comments. You guys, do you guys understand this? There's, there's gonna be other, ways to look at this. Why do you think these guys look, they shut down the calories, they get away from the drugs and they want to be small. Right, right, right. No one's going to disagree with that. That's, that's obviously something they, they want to be small doc. And this is not to dramatize and to put anyone down. I want to give mechanisms scientifically because I'm the anabolic doc. And I want you guys to understand, well, where's the evidence? Well, there's the evidence. And do you have to be that way? Well, if you use a lot of drugs, tons of drugs, you're going to pay the piper. So I want you young guys to do, don't touch anything, man. Don't even do this. Like, like just go the other way, do something else. And, and you, you can be healthy in your 50s and 60s, even 70s and not be on testosterone. You don't need testosterone. If you're a healthy man metabolically, you don't need testosterone for your sex and to have a great healthy life. You're gonna pay for it, matter of fact. But if you do decide to use testosterone and even different degrees of androgens, I want you to consider this video as 
proof of what may happen. And I know there are extreme examples, but I see examples, hundreds and thousands of examples all the time. I mean, in my collective 20 years as a physician and guys have regretted it. They're in their 50s, 40s, even 60s, not to mention. And they say, doc, I just regret it, man, because I have health consequences. And I just feel horrible now. I'm exhausted because my heart, my kidney, and I can't even get the muscles anymore. God, even on testosterone, because the stimulation is gone. And that's that molecular aspect really on the androgen receptor on the skeletal muscle with the disease of the heart and the kidney and other systemic aspects and psychological disease. Let's get the comments, guys. This is a really cool video. I want to bring it home to you guys because a lot of, of you guys have asked me to do this in, over time. Doc, why do they look so bad when they retire? Does it have to be? Here's your example. So thank you so much, guys. I really hope this video keeps so many of you guys off steroids, even testosterone, and to really think about what you're doing, to pause and to think and make that decision for yourself.